creating and managing deployment images. Deployment image. Deployment. 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 Means uh, how we can deploy uh, our operating systems with the help of uh, network. Okay. How we can deploy our network. Yeah. Thank you. So now today we're talking about deployment, deployment of uh, deployment of OS or deployment of uh, operating systems. Okay, so let's project start it let's start it let's open my paint once let's start it again. So we just start. Creating and managing deployment images. Okay. So uh, if you're talking about servers, like imagine, like the, the topic is creating and Now, this is the topic name C R E creating and managing deployment images. Now, first we need to understand okay, not to this. Okay, the first way to understand deployment. What is the meaning of deployment? Okay, and what is the meaning of images over there? Okay, we need to understand this. I just highlight this. Okay, mm -hmm. we need to understand these things. That what we need, we need to understand this. And what is that? Deployment images. Deployment images means like um, deployment means like when you when you deploy something to the clients. Deploy means we want to um, install remotely. Okay, I don't have any uh, DVD rooms, I don't have any ISOs, I don't have any bootable pen drives and anything. Like imagine, uh, I'm, I'm using uh, dumb PCs in my in my uh, systems. Dumb PCs means like I have a desktop system, but over there there is no uh, DVD room and there is no USB pen drives. Okay, in my cabinet or in my CPU, I don't have DVD room and I don't have pen drives. Means uh, USB ports. To, to attach pen drives or to attach external drives because I have a confidential letter, so I don't want that anyone uh, access those uh, USB pen USB ports. So I remove all USB ports in my desktop machines. Okay, and I don't have any CD ROMs. Now I want to install OS on a machine. So I have a variety of uh, I have variety of numbers. Like if I want to, what I uh, what I able to go number one. I am going to uh, uh, go for a fresh installation, you know that. Fresh installation, press installation with the help of uh, ISO images, okay, or uh, uh, with the help of USB, USB pen drives, okay, fine. So these are the options we have, okay. Now I don't have these things. Or second thing we have, you can go for a remote installation, remote installation. 
Remote installation means with the help of one server, I can deploy OS to systems, my clients, with the help of network. Okay, that is known as remote installation. Okay, so if you're talking about the servers, so uh, when your server starts, like Windows 2000 onwards, okay, we have the services name is for remote installation, we have some, some services. Okay, so for remote installation, we have one service named RIS in uh, server 2000. It starts with RIS. Okay, same install same service are runs in uh, uh, run in uh, server 2003 also. Okay, so yeah, over there RIS means is RIS means is remote installation services. Remote installation services. The full form is remote installation services. So what we are going to we need to go if I want to deploy OS with this particular server. I need to install. I just go open my server manager. I can add roles, and I need to install this this role. Remote installation. This is the role. This is not a feature. It's a role. One. Okay. So remote installation services. I just installed simple. Okay. And then I configure it, and then I deploy the OS. Okay. With with 2000 2003 servers. After what happens when 2008 comes? 2008 R2 or 2008 R1 comes. Okay. So over there, the service name is WDS. Let's change the service over there. Okay. WDS in Server 2008. I'm sorry. Server 2008. Eight onwards. The service name is WDS. Okay. The full form of this is Windows Deployment Services. Okay. It's continue now. Now it continue. Now WDS also uh, also in uh, Server 2012 also. It's in uh, Server 2016 also. Okay, and it's same in server 2019 also. Unless it, fine. In 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 2016, we they 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 have a new uh, uh, concept also. Okay, like a new concept name is MDT. MDT. It's a it's a third party tool. You can say that. Right. We need to install this. It's a Microsoft tool. You can say that. Microsoft deployment tool. Okay. The question. The full form is Microsoft deployment tool this is also a one a one tool with the help of this also i can deploy OS or images understood you will understand these things now okay so uh, this, this is this is what we have okay so what i need to do this is the uh, two services we have one is wds another one is ris in 2016 onwards they they uh, they go for a new tool mdt microsoft deployment in 16 onwards. In 16, they have option also MDT also. Okay, but we always use WDS. It's a by default tool in your servers. It's a by default tool. If you want to use MDT, so first you need to download it with the Microsoft because it's not in the in the part of 2016. You need to first download it with the Microsoft and then you can use this MDT. Understood? Okay. Now the question is number one: What is the difference between RIS and WDS? Okay, why we are using that time RIS? Now, why Microsoft changes their services? Okay, in RIS, what happens if I am uh, if I want to install OS with the help of RIS? So they not give me the partition table. Means they not give me uh, the partition partition options in my in my in my when I deploying the OS with the help of RIS. Like imagine if I if I deploy if I have 40 GB in my client system, I have 40 GB hard disk, and I'm going to deploy the OS. They are not asking me for partition. They simply taking automatically a full full C drive. They, they, they simply take occupy all the space automatically and install the OS. They're not asking me whether I go for how much space I need to give in the C drive or D drive or E drive. They don't asking me for the partitions. They simply automatically take all the space, occupy automatically, and then it makes one C drive and install the OS. That is was the major issue in RIS. Okay, that's why they changed there in WDS Windows Deployment Services and that they ask you for partitions. They ask you everything. Okay, if you want to create primary partition, you want to create extended partition, you want to create logical drives, which I we which we previously discussed already, primary extended logical drives. Okay, so uh, they ask you all these things. Understood? Okay, so we have uh, three services. You can see that 2003 onwards we are using RIS, 2008 onwards we all use WDS, and in 16 we have a new tool MDT. Microsoft deployment tool. Understood? Okay. Now, 
now uh, this is what we have now uh, if you're talking about the if you're talking about the about the uh, images so i just open another pane now and i just again go for now we're talking about images okay images now what type of images we need to deploy okay number one we need uh, uh, like if you're talking about the WDS so WDS starts onwards Vista like uh, if you have a Vista operating system so w, we can install uh, uh, if, if, I, if I want to install uh, if I want to use WDS so we always we only install Windows Vista onwards Windows Vista Windows 7 Windows 8 8.1 Windows 10 or Windows Server 2008 2012 2016 we can deploy these only these images only okay if you want to install windows xp if you want to install windows 95 or windows 98 or windows 2000 so you are not able to install with the help of wds services okay understood fine so images if you're talking about so uh, we have if you're talking about the images so images means that what images or what file system they, they use okay so the uh, wds if you're talking about the wds so they use dot wmi wim format format it means that if your image does, doesn't have the this file dot wim you're not able to install you're not able to deploy the image with the help of wds okay it works on dot wim format the full form is windows imaging format okay windows imaging format understood previously if you're talking about the ris it works on uh, uh, M, uh, micro M, msi it works on msi dot uh, msi msi files i'm sorry dot msi format okay so that's why uh, we are not able to uh, to deploy uh, if if you have, if you are working with RIS uh, services, so we are not able to install Vista because Vista onwards the files are uh, are in just in your in your uh, OSS format. So the first one we are taking so Vista hmm. Windows 2000 2003 7 8 and 10. Hmm. Okay. So like if you, if you, if you if you're using uh, WDS, so we start only Vista onwards. Or if you want to deploy, if you want to deploy 2003 or 2000 or XP operating systems with the help of WDS, so first you need to convert this MSI to WIM, and after that you're able to do that. Understood? Okay. MSI the full form is Microsoft uh, Microsoft install installer. You can say that MS means Microsoft, I means installer. Okay. Microsoft installer. Okay, like I showing you how it's how MSI files look like. Okay, so uh, once you uh, like MSI means like if you install some uh, previous operating systems uh, or 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 or, or uh, Office, like if you're talking about if you're talking about uh, uh, Office 2003, okay, Office 2007. In that we have MSI files. Okay, it works on MSI files always. Understood. Okay, so uh, it, it's look like this. If I showing you with the help of internet, so maybe you will to understand the MSI files. Okay, or we or we can search in in our OS also we have have lots of MSI files. Okay, some softwares are working on MSI files like Office. Okay, sometimes your Adobe Reader's MSI Microsoft installer files. Okay. So uh, when you walk, when you when you download uh, the previous versions Office like 2000 2000 XP uh, Windows XP uh, sorry Office XP Office 2003 Office 2007 then that in that Office they be uh, they are using on MSI files. I want this PC means like Windows PowerPoint. Yeah, Windows PowerPoint. You 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 so see that some some Office uh, files if you have working they are working with the MSI files. Okay, so. Uh, if I try to see, I just click once this way. Okay, just minimize this one. Just check once. I maybe in C drive we have some MSI files. So we just search also in in the in the C drive also. So because C drive have so uh, so many operating system files, so uh, they have some MSI files also. Okay. 
so msi files are always always used to it, it's it's kind of installer files you can say that if you want to install any application okay or if i want to install any application tool so we can use msi files also sometimes wim wim is a imaging imaging windows imaging format if you want to deploy something okay so that case we can use wim okay so it's also a, it's a, it, it's it's for deployment only okay deployment means like with the help of one server i can deploy something to uh, my client with the help of internet okay, or with the help of network hmm? it's when you want to install that yeah then you can go for msi okay like dot exe file is an executable file like if you want to run some application then we can use dot exe okay like imagine like you want to run uh, over their uh, virtual box so what is your this this file which you run double click on that that file is known as dot exe file virtual box dot exe to run the application to run the file okay like like uh, if I, if i want to um, if if i want to open uh, uh, your pdf a dot reader so dot reader also have a dot exe file okay so whenever you run any application any 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 program then you have then we always use dot exe file E -X -E. E -X -E. okay so this is what so you have three types of extensions you can say that okay so now if i uh, search something in my c drive so i think so maybe we have some uh, uh, msi files are there msi files is an installation installer file if you want to install something then are we uh, used in that case dot msi see if i just search in c drive dot msi let's see if they have msi files or not <clears throat> well, it's a very old technology now dot msi files so maybe they have or not in windows 2016 i don't know well, let's see if they have okay even you install also even you download the msi files also in the with the help of internet okay like if you want to install uh, a doc reader okay a doc reader means the um, the pdf application it's also a pdf application hmm. like adobe or like adobe so adobe also available in msi they they showing you some msi msi files like in in uh, amd is what my processor is amd 64 so their drivers are have their some msi files contained there okay so msi files is what it's a simple microsoft installer files if you want to install some some components okay so in that case we can use always msi files and that's it Understood. Like imagine, uh, like I just download one uh, one Office suite. In Office, we have different different components. You know that Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Okay. So like I I only install a uh, Word. I don't want any other components. I only install which Word. So I open the open my uh, uh, Office Office application. Okay. In that we have uh, Word dot msi file. I just open. I just install it only. That's it. So I, I I want only Word. So it's it's a it's a component. If you want to install any application components, only specific components. In that case, we can use dot msi files. Okay. On the first one, when you want to install locally, yeah, then you can use dot wim. Okay. If you want to install a specific component in the application, then we can use dot msi. If you want to run application, that we can use dot exe. Exe full form is executable files. Understood. Any setup you can run. That setup is running on the .exe file. It's executed and then you able to run your application. Like you install any game, you install any software. In that case, you double click on setup now, and then the setup is automatically for .exe executable files. Okay. So these are these are some MSI files we have. MSI files is are only a Microsoft installer files. If you want to install any component in the full application, you want to install some specific components. Then that time we can use. MSI files. Understood? Okay. So uh, we have we have some types of files. You can say that we have. This is the types of files we have. Dot MSI. Dot WIM. So we always use dot WIM for WDS. In with the help of W. If you want to install any OS with the help of WDS, then we can use only dot WIM. Okay. This file working only in WDS services. WDS. Okay. I'm just mentioning over there WDS. Okay. This is for WDS. Understood? Okay. 
if you if you want to install a install an older versions older OS like Windows XP Windows 1000 2003 okay in that case we need RIS okay these files for RIS remote installation services which working in your 2000-2003 servers okay okay like this so this is only 2000-2003 yeah 2000-2003 Windows XP Windows NT, Windows 2009, Windows 98, 95, all pre-Windows, okay. the older Windows, okay? Yeah, like the up, uh, down the, the newer Windows, like Windows Vista onwards, we always works on .wm files, okay? So like you can see that, RAS works on 2000-2003 only, okay? WDS works on all these server operating systems. Understood? Okay, if you're talking about the client versions, so with the help of RIS, we can install only Windows 95, 98, 2000 or XP. Okay, this is the servers. This is the servers. Okay. Now, if I want to deploy clients, like I want, I want to install Windows XP in my in my in my desktops. So what we need, we need RIS servers. Okay, we need RIS services, and we can deploy with the help of XP. Okay, now till XP we can use RIS, but after XP, like Windows Vista onwards, we use WDS. If you want to deploy Vista, if you want to deploy Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1, Windows 10, then you can use only WDS services. But in 16, we have a third party tool that name is MDT, Microsoft Deployment Tool. With the help of this also, we can deploy the images or OS. Understood? Okay. Now, uh, this is what we have two formats. We are working on that. Okay. Now, number third, what we need to understand is. <coughs> Now we have two types of images we are talking about, okay. This is the extensions we can talking about, okay. Now we have types of images. So number one, we have thin image, thin image. Now thin image means, thin image is the smallest image you can say that. Small image, small image, thin image means small image, thin means me, means what? If you're talking, if you're talking about the thin means the the compressed or small image we have. Like imagine if you're talking about the OS. So uh, like sometimes what happens? I, I deploy only application. I'm not in, I'm deploy OS full OS. I want to deploy only an app an, an application. Like I want to deploy uh, Office 65. I want to deploy Office in my clients. Mm -hmm. Only Office, not OS, not full OS, only Office. Okay. So that in that case we are using which image? Thin image. Okay. If you uh, install only official, like the only office application should be showing. Yeah, up. exactly. Like, like, like. Imagine that uh, uh, my desktop, my 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 clients have all the all the OS installed in that. With the help of WDS, I can deploy OSs. Okay. Now what I want to do, I want to deploy their office. I want that. Okay. With the help of server, I can deploy only office to all my clients okay so in that case we can use thin image okay thin images you can see that it's the smallest image a very very small images okay or you can modify the images you can see that okay yeah we have a thick image also okay we have a thick image thick images means like operating system okay <coughs> operating system is a thick image Okay. Thank you. okay, now we have some differences also in this two also, like I, uh, what thin image contains, if I have a thin image, so it contains, it contains only OS. Only OS. It contains only OS. Okay, like if I want to install only OS, I don't want to install any application with that. Okay, so it contains only OS. Or if we're talking about the uh, thick image, it contains OS with applications by end user. Okay. End user. Means like imagine uh, I want that with the help uh, with OS I want to deploy uh, Office also. I want to de de deploy two, two things. Okay, 
I want to deploy Windows 8, okay, in my client systems or Windows 10 in my client systems. With the with, with the Windows 10, I want to deploy Office also. All the application that goes on. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Okay, so that in that case we can use always thick images. That images is known as thick images. Okay, fine. So uh, if I if I deploy only OS, that image is known as thin image. If I if I deploy with the with the uh, with OS some applications also, that image is known as which images? Thick yes. images. Thick. Understood. Clear. Okay. Now uh, in that we have two types more. Number third we have boot image. boot images and number four we have install image okay number uh, boot images means what boot images who boot your operating uh, who boot the uh, environment like imagine like right now we, my, my my desktop doesn't have any any operating system i just physically connect with the uh, server okay with the help of DHCP server they gives the IP address to, the, to my system okay and when my system boots it boots on network right now it's not booting with the DVD ROM or USB pen drives it works with the network okay so when it boots boot image provides the environment that environment name is uh, that environment name is PX, PXE you can say that okay I'll showing you the practical what is PE Windows environment. Sorry, it provides it provides Windows PE PE pre-executable environment. You can do that pre-executable pre environment. PE the full form of PE is pre-installation environment or pre-executable. You can have pre-installation environment. Okay, the full form of PE is pre-installation environment. For Windows 10, this is for Windows 10 only. Okay, if you want to deploy Windows 10, so they gives you what they gives you a pre-installation environment. Pre-installation means uh, how I uh, explain you pre-installation. Pre-installation means uh, like when you when you when you start your system, your system boots, right? The system boots. It boots with the network. And when it uh, boots with the network, it's connect with the server first and then server gives you the image so in our in our in our windows 10 image we have two types of images boot image and install image with the help of boot image system boots and with the help of install image system install the os understood uh, install images have all the operating system files with it okay so it contains con contains all the operating system files to deploy to clients client computers okay okay so uh, 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 it uses it use we can use both image to start a client computer this is what we have Okay, so uh, uh, boot image is what it provides Windows PE means pre-installation environment for Windows 10. We can use boot image to start a client computer means to boot a client computer. You can say that. Okay, and after booting the client computer, they give they takes install image. Okay, and then it contains all the operating system files to deploy to client computers. With the help of install image, it collect all the in all the uh, booting uh, operating system files and they going to install everything on that. On the client. Understood. Okay. So every uh, OS we have two images: boot images and install images. 
every OS. It starts with Windows Vista, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1, Windows 10. They have those boot image and install images. So they have two images. They have two images. And if I'm showing you like, like right now, I'm working with uh, Windows 10 now. I'm working with Windows 10. If I if I oh, if I open C drive, so we have boot image also. See, if I open the C drive and try to search, which one? Let's close this and go to uh, boot image. You can see that. Okay, they're showing you boot image also. The extension of this boot image is same. Dot W I M. W I am I Windows am. Imaging Format, Imaging. which I had already told you. Okay, boot image and install image, both the extensions are same. Okay, boot dot wim and install dot wim. This is the image. Uh, this is the uh, name you can say that. A file. Boot dot wim and install dot wim. This is the file actually. Okay. Boot wim. I am. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Okay, able to understand these things now. Okay, I'll show you the practical, which I able to understand properly. Okay, yeah, we'll see the practical, not to worry. Okay, now uh, the next one we need to understand is. Okay, so we have uh, some tools also working on the working on uh, you can say that when you when we deploy OS with the help of WDS, some tools are working automatically over there. Okay, some are third party tools or some are working automatically. Okay, the so number one tool we're talking about it's uh, ADK. ADK is a kit. You can say that it is known as automated automated deployment kit. Okay, auto. Automated deployment kit. This is also uh, this is also a third-party software. Okay, we need to deploy, we need to install it also with the help of Microsoft. First, we need to download it, and then we can install it. With the help of this, also we can uh, you can say that deploy uh, OS. But not only OS, we can deploy applications also. We can deploy anything. What you want? We can deploy drivers. We can deploy so many things with the help of ADK. It's a complete package. It's a complete five to six GB tool when you deploy when you when you download it on six GB. Ha, five to six GB tool. It's okay. So it's 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 like eight point one. Uh, you have a versions of ADK. So right now we are using Windows ten. For Windows ten we have a separate ADK. For Windows eight we have a separate ADK. Okay, ADK eight point one, eight point zero, Windows ten. These are the some versions of ADK. So ADK is also a very powerful tool. Okay, for for Windows deployment. Okay, and once we are using this WDS, we have the tool name is DSIM. This is the tool. It's a command line tool. It's automatically running when you deploy images. OS or images. Okay, so is a it's a I just mentioning over there. It is a command line tool. Okay, we can use to deploy dot wm files. Okay, so if you if you want if you want to if you if you know uh, uh, commands, okay, then we can use this DSIM also. Okay, so DSIM also is a tool. Okay, so with it, it's, it's a command line tool only. 
okay there is no graphical user board one is also a command line tool the name is imagex imagex this is also a command line tool okay it is same a command line tool okay to manage dot wm images dot wm images through adk okay it works with adk understood image x so these are some command line tools also and these are some tools which we work uh, uh, with deployment okay so adk is a gui and ds dsim and image x is a command line tools instead of wds or ras we have these tools also okay to deploy the images or to deploy deploy the os okay now write down the requirements what we need to install wds requirements wds so what we need we need one separate drive one separate ntfs drive to save database of wds One separate NTFS file file system drive to save database of WDS. We not uh, always remember that we need a separate drive for WDS database. We in ah uh, where we uh, on the server where we install WDS we need a separate drive. We not install WDS with the on in C drives database. Okay, and number second, we are what we need. Uh, we need DHCP server. Okay, to deploy uh, to provide IP address. address okay number third uh, all uh, clients should be should be connected with so okay physically or logically connected you can say that physically or virtually connected hmm they should be connected to the server Ah, so should be uh, physically or virtually. If you if you are virtual environment, you are using virtual environment, so you are virtually should be connected. Okay. If you we are right now we are using virtual environment, so physically or virtually connected with with server. Okay. And we need OS image also. OS ISO image. Okay, well, we means which OS you want to deploy. Okay, we need that image. Okay, and we need the two images, boot, boot and install images. Okay, to deploy OS through WDS services. Understood. So these are the five requirements we need. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so what I need to do, uh, like if I if I if you uh, uh, go for the servers, so I have two servers right now. Okay, mm -hmm. so remember one thing also that we not install both the services on same servers, WDS and DHCP. Will not be on the same. We are not installing both the services on same server. Okay, okay. it's conflicting. Okay, what so DHCP and WDS we are not installing on the same servers. What? 
We call it conflicting. They have some each. Uh, they have some. They, these are these two servers are conflicting with each other. Okay, it's not working properly. So what we need? We need two servers. One is for DHCP server and one for WDS server. So in my DC, I can install DHCP. Okay, and in my second server, server two, I can install WDS. And I configure WDS. Understood? Clear? Yeah. Okay. So what I need to do? I just open my server one right now. I am in server one right now. I am in server one right now. Okay. So over there I can install DHCP. I am open my server manager already. Okay. I am just going to install DHCP only. So it's a roll again. Okay. Install. When you go to roles, they are give you the option DHCP server. Okay, I simply click on next, next, and automatically restart. And then install. You're making notes also. Yeah, I'm making notes so that will be easy for me. Means in the recording also you have a notes. Okay. Meanwhile, you make sure that you have a cop some copies, multiple copies of your notes. <laughs> if one yeah. is lost, so please you have. Okay, you can see that uh, my uh, WDS is, uh, is installed successfully. Now I want to configure my WD, uh, sorry, DACP. So first I need to complete the DACP configuration. Now what is this complete DACP configuration? When you install DACP with the, with the AD, or with, you can see that with in domain environment, you need to first authorize your DACP. If I am not authorized my DACP, okay, it not providing the IP address to my uh, domain, domain clients. Okay, so first I need to just click on the, uh, complete DCP configuration. After installing DCP, I need to just click on DCP post configuration wizard. You can see that we have the authorized DCP server on target computer if domain joined. Okay, let's click on next now. It's automatically taking my username and password. So always remember when you uh, install DCP in AD, you need to log in with the domain administrator once. Okay, now first commit after that. You can see that after committed. The authorization DHCP server is done. Understood? Okay, now simply click on close. Now close this also. Now go to tools and you have the option DHCP. Okay, just simple click on DHCP. Minimize this. Don't want any server manager now. Now this is, a, this is a DHCP console we have. Okay, now expand this. We have the option IP4 and IPv6. Now what IP address you want to use? So I'm using only IPv4 right now. I'll expand this. And right click on that, we have the option new scope. Simple, I give the range. You can say I am getting the pool over there. Okay, I simple click on next now. Now, let's just imagine my uh, pool 01. Okay, next. Now, I need to give the start and end range of IP addresses. So, I already use 192.168.1.5 onwards. I always use. Okay, and I go for 192.168.1.5. 10 okay 10 i am what is it 9 okay i give only 4 3 to 4 ip addresses not more than that 
five to nine. Okay, as per as as per your uh, uh, requirement, you can give the range over there. Okay, so I'll click on next again. Okay, now you are, if you want to exclude anything in the range, you can exclude also. Like imagine my range is five to nine. I want that. I want to I want to exclude the seven IP address. One hundred one thousand one dot seven. I want to exclude it. I want I don't I want, I want that my my DSP server is not providing this IP address. Okay, so we can exclude the range also. Then the parallel code next item I am not excluding. By default, it gives me eight days lease. Eight days lease means they give me only I, this IP address for it till eight days. Now it gives you to a client. The client will have it for eight days. Yeah, have it for after eight days. Nine only. days. Yeah, after after, after eight days, then it automatically expires. Okay. So it's go for again for IP address. Okay. So by default, eight days. Maximum the days is triple nine days. Triple nine. Okay. Triple nine, not more than that. It's a maximum days. Okay. So by default is eight days. If you want to go for hours or minutes, you can go for hours or minutes option also. Okay. So right now we have eight days. Now click on next. You want to configure the scope option now? Yes. I want to configure the scope option. If you have a router, then you can give the router IP addresses also over there. Okay. I don't have a router right now. You have a DNS. We are working already. Set dot local by domain name and the IP address is automatically taken. Okay. Now click on next now. Wins we discuss later. Right now, right now we are not using wins. Okay, wins is working in pre-windows. Like DNS is working in upper windows. Like the same we have a wins also. Okay, now we go next now. Now I want to activate this scope now. Yes, I want to activate this scope. If I want, if I if I don't want to activate the scope, it's not working. It disabled by default. Okay, so you want to activate this scope also. Click on next and click on finish. You can see that now we have a scope is ready. This is my address pool. My address pool is between five to Nine, understood. So my DHCP is successfully configured. Okay, fine. Now I'm going to my server two. This is my server two. I'm switched to my server two now. Over there, I'm going. I'm going to install W D S and configure W D S. Okay. Okay, now I am just going to start. Now, how, how, for, for what, why, what I need to do? I need. Uh, okay, one thing also in the requirement, uh, like my client is going to uh, um, boot with the with the network, right? Mm -hmm. So we, what we need, we need a PXC LAN cards, PXE LAN cards. In your LAN card, they have a PXC chip, IC chip. Okay, it means what if if my if my LAN card doesn't have a PXC chip, it means we are not able to boot with the LAN cards. It's not a bootable LAN card we have. So it, it came with the PXC chip. Right now, every LAN card is, is came with the PXC chip. And it's enabled by default. It's enabled by default. Can okay, you... I'll showing you the PXC chip once. Okay, with the help of internet connect internet, I will showing you. See how how it look like. If I go to Google. in meters um see have you seen this chip this chip this is the pxc chip we have every lan card has this chip okay so uh, if you See, every LAN card has the PXC chip. See, you can see that this is the PXC chip we have. Okay, so every uh, so if if this chip is not available on your LAN card, okay, your PC is not able to boot with the LAN card. Okay, now right now every LAN card is like it's look like this previously. In the in the previously when we have a i5 or sorry i4 or i3 operating uh, means uh, hardware, that time it it look like this PXC. Okay, so uh, this is what we have. So every land card, like if you purchase the physical land card with the with the shopkeeper, okay, so you can see that the chip is not in there. Not if chip is not there, so you are not able to boot with the land card. Okay, so what I need to do, I just go to my server two now. Now I am going to 
install WDS. Okay. Before I do this, I think I have a separate drive in my Google settings. Attachment storage 40 GB. Okay, we, minimum we need 20 GB for WDS. Okay. Ma means you can say that 20 GB is recommended, you can say that. Okay, for storage and all. So I have only one hard disk. I can add some storage. Okay. 20 GB storage and I make one partition and that partition is for WDS database. Okay. So I have a hard disk. Next, next, I go for 20 GB only. Click on OK. Go for desk management. Okay, so this is my disk, disk, 20 GB disk we have. Okay, I just create one volume for WDS. Okay, full. I I can occupy a full 20 GB. This is for WDS. In volume level, I can mention WDS. Okay, mm -hmm. means I am able to see that. It's for it's for identification only. Simple click on next and finish. You can see that in E drive is working with 20 GB. Okay, so E drive is there and it's for WDS. Okay, so if you if you see in my explorer, if I open my file explorer, and I can see that in this PC we have a E drive. The name is WDS. Okay, I can mentioning the name. You can mention any name in volume label. They're showing you over there. Okay, so now I'm going to install WDS services. So in roles, we have option on down WDS Windows deployment services. Let's let's click this. Add features. Okay, so I click on next. Click on next. This is the overview they are showing you. Now we have two types of servers in that: the deployment server and transport server. Deployment means you can deploy the OS, and transport is you can sending or receiving the packets. Sending or receiving, sending or receiving the packet. Transport means what? Means the sending or receiving the packet over the internet. Okay. I'm not getting Like, uh, uh, what is the meaning of transport over there? Transport server means who? We have two types of components in WDS, deployment and transport. Deployment is used to deploy the OS on the client. Mm -hmm. uh, transport is used to sending or receiving the packets with the, with the internet. The like, like, like imagine I have a system over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is my uh, laptop. I connect those system with the, with the network. Now I want to deploy it with the help of this laptop. I deploy the OS. So when I deploy, they connect with the, this laptop and they send to receive some packets some uh, OS information mm -hmm. on, the, on the form of packets. Mm -hmm. So that maintains by transport server. So if I disable it, I can be able to <coughs> install uh, the OS on API. Yeah, right. So it, it's, you can say it's working as a TFTP protocol. TFTP protocol. Okay. So your WDS works on TFTP protocol, you can say that. TFTP. TFTP. One is FTP, file transfer protocol for downloading. One is TFTP, trivial file transfer protocol. TFTP. TTP. Yeah, TFTP. Where where you can uh, with the help of this also you can install your iOS in your routers also, right? So the same thing. Click on next. Restart if required. Yes. Be sure that you need to check these two options. Okay. Next and then install. Simple. Okay. I able to understand these things? Yeah, okay. Right. For now, it's okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay, making the things that what we did till now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay, so you can see that the, the deployment of WDSS means the installation of WDS services is installed. Okay, now click on close now. Okay, now if you just click on tools, then we have the option over there in the town, Windows, deployment, services. Okay, so simple click on open and minimize this so manager and this is sorry i minimize this i open wds this is the console we have windows deployment services okay now if you expand this one we have a server server 2 dot local and if you click on that it is showing you if you just click on that they're showing you windows deployment services not configured till now i just only installed i'm not configuring anything at that understood okay now i'm going to configure my windows deployment services now, first, I mentioned that what, sub, what uh, image I want to deploy. I want to deploy Windows 10 Imagine in my client OS, in my client, uh, uh, means my client systems. Okay. So first, I need to first I need what the image. So I just uh, insert the image in my server to Windows 10 Image. Okay. So I just go to settings, my VM settings. I go to my DVD and browse over there. I'm you want to install Windows 10? Yeah, I want to install Windows 10. So that for for so for that I need Windows 10 image. If you want to install Windows 7, that you go for Windows 7 image. So here, this is a server. This is my server. And you want to install? No, I am deploying. I am just tell that this is the image. I give that boot image install image. And remember, we have two types of images. So I have to give the path to my server. Okay, so I just go for Windows 10 Enterprise. I open it, and like you can see that I have an image now. Okay, I insert the DVD or you can say I, I copy the image to this particular server. Okay, now I go to configure, just right click on that, we have the option configure server. Okay, where I right click server 2.set.local, I just right click, we have option configure server. Let's click on configure server. Now you can see that Windows deployment services configuration wizard is now open. So what you need, this will give you the all the options, like see. Okay, so what do you need? You need AD server, AD domains. We already have a domain environment with us. Okay, we need DCP server. We already did. Okay, we have a DNS server. We already have, and we have a NTFS file system partition on images which for different, which we already created. E drive, 20 yeah. GB drive. Okay, so now let's click on next. Now, now they are asking me. We have two options. Either your services works with AD. Means you have a, if you if you don't have an AD environment like I don't have a domain network so in that case we can go for standalone server but right now we have a Active Directory running in my servers right we have a domain environment so in that case what we need to do we can choose integrated with Active Directory I want that this this service works with domain so I need to go for this if I don't want if I if I check this standalone it means it not this service not works in Active Directory. Understood. So we can go for integrate with Active Directory. Simply click on next now. Now see by default it goes to C drive. So I don't want to do. I want E. My drive is E, which I create 20 GB drive. And the folder name is remote install. It's automatically created. Folder name remote install in C in your E drive. And all the database of WDS is working on them. Understood? Okay. I simply click on next now. Now they want to ask me, do not respond to any clients. If I choose this option, do not respond to any client, what happens? Client tried to contact my server, but my server is not responding. Why? Because I choose this option. If you have second option also, respond only to known clients. Known client means the clients who joined my domain, you need to respond only that. If, we, if my client doesn't have an OS, so how they join my domain? Okay, so we can we can go for always this one. Respond to all clients, whether it is unknown or known. Understood. Simply click on next now. Okay, now they're configuring the Windows deployment services on this particular server. Understood. Okay, now you can see that operation completed. Okay. Now I uncheck this. I don't want to add so add images right image right now. I just add image later first. I just click on finish. I uncheck this option. Com operation completed. My configuration is successfully completed now. Now we have the option install image in 
boot image. Have you seen the option? Install image and boot image. So I just right click to the install images option and we have a add install image. And then they have to do to do the boot image first to provide the environment before installing the image. Or yeah, first I need to image first. Okay, first first we go for uh, means uh, I I need to uh, uh, means provide both the images at the same time. Yeah, okay. At the same time. Like at the same time, like first I first I provide them install image and then we need to give the install boot image. I thought like you do the boot image and after do the install image. Yeah, it's okay, but it's not a, according to series you can do that. You need to give both the images. Okay. Meantime, while we are starting the deployment. Okay. So now there is an option also that we can we can deploy more than two images also. Like imagine I have 10 clients mm -hmm. systems in my in my network out of 10 I want five client for Windows 8 I want for other five clients for Windows 10 okay so we can deploy more than one images also over there okay. so when when you when your client accessing those images they are asking you which image you want to deploy Windows 8 or Windows 10 okay they will ask them which one do you want to use yeah exactly okay so right now I'm installing two images over there you can see that they are asking they are asking me what image you want to install so first i go for windows 10 and then you can go for windows 7 also so after the installation like if they want to change as soon as they reboot again they yeah them. exactly so what about the data that okay the data will be saved in, in the servers in like the we servers. can we can with the help of group policy and all we can provide the things then we can go for servers okay or if the data is lost we have the backup also because we're taking the backup also in the previous one. so let's go for install image and we have the add install image Click on that. This is the group. By default, group it's it's, uh, it's make image group one. You can change the name of the group also as as is according to you. So we'll click on next now. Now they are asking you the location where your install image. So I go to browse. I need to give my DVD. The I have a DVD. Okay. Now in DVD, I need to go for sources. The DVD have four folders. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like I go to sources. In sources, we have the option boot.wim have you seen the file boot.wim sorry i i am going to install I'm going to go for install image so i go for installer wim so click on open then this is the path where my install image exists okay now click on next now now we have only one edition over there windows 10 enterprise like if you have multiple editions you can deploy multiple editions also like in some we can go for enterprise some we can go for home some we can go for ultimate so like we have in go for multiple editions also now simply click on next now now windows 10 image is there okay click on next okay now it's adding this image to wds understood mm -hmm. able to understand uh, uh, able to understand these things okay so now it's going to add my windows 10 image
No, I can see that. See, the image was successfully added. Mm -hmm. seven. Okay, so install image is successfully added. Now I'm going to. If you if you if you see that, if you uh, expand this, you can see that. See, the Windows 10 Enterprise image is there, and it, this image is online right now. Okay, and the architecture of this image is 64 bit. Okay, now uh, like same, we can go for boot image also. Right click, install, add boot image. Okay, same. They want they want to ask me the uh, the location. So same in D drive. The same source. See, automatically taking the path. D source in source we have boot dot wim. So I click on open. Open. Click on next. See Windows setup 64 bit edition. We go for and then click on adding the image. Understood. Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> you do it once. Okay, now you can see that install image was successfully added. Click on finish. So now you can see that my image is successfully added. This is the one image we can add. We can add see, like this. We can add. We can add multiple images also. Okay. okay like if I if I go to Windows, uh, if I go to Windows 7. So what I need to do first, I need to add the image of Windows 7 again. Go to Browse. We have Windows Windows 7. Okay, this is the image I added. Click on OK. Now, right click, click on Add Install Image again. Go to Browse. Now this time, DVD, DVD in Sources in Sources we have Install dot wim open. Now click on next. Now see, we have so many versions in Windows 7. Okay, there are so many additions in Windows 7. So, so what edition you want to deploy? You can choose. Or if you want to deploy all the editions, you can choose. Okay. So, like imagine, uh, I want only like I imagine I want only uh, these. Uh, I don't want 60, 32 bit. I want only 64 bit editions. So I go for this one. X86 means 60, 32 x64 means 64 bit so i want professional and ultimate only okay enterprise and ultimate i don't want professional so as soon as you take only one image of windows 7 it will like it gives you all the yeah uh, so you have the options all the options yeah the like i'm showing you i'm showing you when we when we when we go for client side now i'll show you so i go for windows 7 enterprise and windows 7 ultimate i want to reply these two okay click on next now click on next again and it's going to adding these images in this in my <coughs> sorry so maybe I have uh, space right <laughs> because I already go for 1.2 GB something yeah we, get we have so many images now that's why I just check once whether I have image uh, I have you can sell and take one just check once if I have Sir, yes. I was confused yesterday. I was looking at the videos. Fat level storage. Yes. Fat level storage. Yeah. Fat level storage is for uh, file level storage. Yeah. File level storage is for is for SMB or NFS. When we go when we when we create a file level shares and ah, file okay. shares and everything, but that that storage is known as file level storage. Ah, okay. okay. With the help of SMB and NFS. Whatever storage we have, whatever shares we have, we configured. Okay. okay. Or if you go for block level storage, so block level means. When we providing the storage with the help of SAN server. 
virtual storage, right? A specific storage to a specific server. You can say that. You can give a block. Okay, so you can see that uh, the, so you can see that right, right now they go showing me Windows 7 2 images also. Okay, now again in boot, I want to go to add boot image, go to browse. Now this time I'm adding my Windows 7 boot image. Okay, the same in D, we have sources, we have boot.wim open next. Okay. Okay. This is the path. Okay. Next, next, next. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. It's added now. Okay, now click on finish. Now what I need to do, I am just go to my, uh, now I'm imagine that I purchase a new client. client. So I just create a new client, client machine. Okay, I go to simple next, next. I hope you know how to client the machine. Yeah. Windows, okay, time this done. This is the machine I under WDS test client. And give up the name of the machine. Yes, yes. Okay. And I able to mention it. Okay, not two zero four eight is the one one five three six. Okay, now you can see that. See one third. Okay, now what I what I I just I'm not mentioning any there. Uh, if I, if I uh, like my machine is created. Okay, now I just click on VM settings and you can see that in DVD I'm not mentioning anything on there. Okay, I don't have any DVD and all. Okay, I just power on this machine. Okay, see, I just power on this machine and I need to press F12 on the starting of this machine for for boot. Okay. I need to press F12 in that case. See, it's searching with DHCP and I press F12 for network boot. Okay? Fine. Okay. Now they're asking me what option you want to choose 32 bit operating system or 64 bit operating system. What option you want to choose 64 bit? Click on enter. Okay? Now it's C booting with my 192.168.1.3. My server to IP address is 192.168.1.3. So it's booting with the with my server and they are taking boot.wmh so this is the PE environment yeah. PE pre-installation environment understood five days now we completed
Thank you. See, when I when I uh, uh, means after that after choosing this 64 and 32, they give me this wizard Windows Deployment Services. Yeah, so With the help of Windows Deployment Services, we are going to install the things now. This is the PXE environment. PXE, yeah. Okay. Click on next now. Now they are asking me my username and password, my domain username and password to connect the means my WDS username and password. Okay. So I go for administrator and the password is abc one two three. the domain administrator and password. You can like this also. Uh, SID slash ADMINISTRATOY in your case your Abdul slash administrator and the password is abc one two three. Okay, whatever password you have, just click on OK. Now you can see all the options. What option you want to install? I want to install Windows 7 or Windows 10. I go for that. If I want to install Windows 10, go for click on simple next. So this depends on the user. It depends on the user. Like it is yeah, I've exactly, Windows exactly. 10. Like if, if I want that I have 10 systems, I want 5 in Windows 7, 5 in Windows 10. So like I want over there at Enterprise, Windows 7 Enterprise. Imagine. So simply click on next now and then it's going to install. See, they asked me the partitions now. This, uh, this option is skipped in RIS. Yeah, it it's skipped. 2003. This option is skipped. Okay. So I just take out Occupy Full Space, 40 GB, and click on Simple Next. So it's going to uh, deploy. So this is very easy. Like if you have 20 computers. Yeah, it's simultaneously deploying. Um, yeah, it's simultaneously deploy all, all 20 computers. And it's very fast also because it's based on a network. If your network speed is fast, your installation this is also fast. And I should. <coughs> now one thing also in that, like if you when you when you deploy this uh, when you deploy OS with this WDS, it's automatically join with your with your system in when uh, in in uh, in uh, a domain also. Okay, so it's we don't want to we know, add the add the guy to the domain. Yeah, we don't want to install manually. We don't want to add manually. I'll show you. But once I just pause the video, once it's going to install, okay. then I'll again do the same. Huh? Okay. I recorded in this. Yeah, I recorded this also. Okay, in the video. I just pause, start the video. It is recorded now. I just pause the. Video. No, it's still running. Seventy nine eighty percent. Let them complete. Then I start the video again. Okay, it's pause again. Okay, now you can see that uh, uh, the, this is the first. Now I'm running the Windows 7 now. Just simply click on next now. Okay, they ask me the name, so I give over their admin. Okay, and just simply click on next. They give the password. Okay, so I just successfully installed. You can see that my I successfully installed my uh, Windows 7 OS. With the help of WDS, ask me later. Okay, we can go for this by default timings. Okay, understood. Now, if you if you go to my server too, so I just log in with the server with my server too. Okay, now I just log in with my server to ABC8123. We have we have some uh, some options also are available. Like we have some option is pending devices. What is the meaning of pending devices? Means the devices was not able to install OS. Okay, so over there uh, the, the the device information is there over there. If it is not if 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 some devices are there was pending pending means they need approval for administrator. They need approval. They need approval for administrator. Like some unknown devices are there. I want that these devices are approval for administrator to deploy to install the Windows. Okay, so these are the pending device options we have. Like they, if if if, if uh, some devices are there who are pending the approval, they're mentioning over there. Right now there is zero pending devices are there. Okay, now we have the multicast transmissions also. Multicast transmission means like if I am using uh, multicast uh, range, like class D range, multicasting range. Okay. So in that case, if I'm using multicast uh, transmissions, in that case, they gives me all the information about there. If some systems are working with multi multicast, okay. If you want to deploy drivers, we have the options also drivers. Drivers is what you know drivers. Yeah. Driver means the device drivers. Like if you if you if you if you purchase printer, okay, they have the driver CD with that, okay, to run the printers, okay. So if you want to deploy drivers, you can deploy drivers also. 
we can add the drivers over there also okay or we can go right click over there we have the options okay we can add the driver packages to this group okay, like imagine i have a printer i want to install uh, i want to deploy printer drivers on these systems also okay so i just click on that i want to simple add the drivers over there okay and then we can deploy it with this okay so we can deploy not only os we can deploy some applications also we can deploy drivers also over in the, with this wds services like if i want to install vmware yeah i can do it i can do it for that okay like this now uh, we have the option active directory pre-staged devices uh, if i expand this so right now see you can see that uh, now the the os of this are installed in windows 7 okay you can see that if i click on this you can see that the login page is there. Mm -hmm. Now this machine name is what? This machine name is administrator one. Mm -hmm. So they're showing me that the system is installed successfully. Mm -hmm. This is the machine which I deployed. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, this installed successfully. Okay, so they're showing me. Okay, so uh, if I if I go for there and I just log in with this, you can see that now they're asking me administrator. Okay, I need to see the system name is administrator one. My machine name is this. I need to go to set slash administrator and password is abc. abc I just log in with the domain. I can log in with the domain, domain admin. You can go for local also. You can see that it's automatically uh, it's added in the domain also. Okay. It's already joined my domain. I'm not uh, joining manually. It goes automatically. Okay, I'll show you. See, once this login, I'll show you. If I go to my this this PC, my uh, my computer and properties, over there they're showing me. It's already adding in the domain. It's not working with now. It's it's not working in uh, in work group now. Okay. Like how I client joined. Okay, so now I don't want to manually join. So this is the one. This is one very cool feature in WDS. It's automatically join your machines. So this is also a skip part you have. Like you see, see how easy your job is now. So can I just install the images on the client without allowing it to draw a uh, like to join the domain? No. By it's default. it's by default it's automatically joining the domain. Okay. See now if I if I go to start and if I uh, right click my my computer and go to properties, you can see that it's already worked in sent out local. Yeah. Okay, this is my domain name, and you can see that uh, my computer name is administrator one. Okay, which is which is mentioned in my uh, in the WDS page. You can see that mentioning over there, it's already installed. If I if I go to my server one, so in there also they're showing me that the client name administrator one is mentioning over there, like over there. Uh, I just close this one. I open which. Uh, tools, AD user and computers. Where we create users, do you remember? Yeah. So I just open it. Yeah, our server one is the DTP server. Yeah. Server two is. Is that WDS server now? WDS. WDS server. Like it's a, it's this the server is a member of my. See, you can see that administrator one is there. In computers. Okay, administrator one is there. This is the Windows 10 computer we have. This is the two servers we have, and these are the clustering which we did. Yeah. Yesterday. Okay. Oh, so right now these classes are not running. So what do you do? You just delete this because you are not using right now. You already removed this. First you need to disable it and now delete it. Right now we not use this. Not use this also. So in my in my infra we have four machines right now. Yeah. Two servers and two clients. And that's it. Okay. So this is what we have WDS. Clear? Yes. Understand? Okay. So like this, we can install and deploy the things. Okay. Okay. So just go for desktop icons. We have desktop icons. Now this is what we have a topic one: creating and maintaining deployment services. Okay. Right. Now I'll uh, showing you something about uh, the other other things. Okay, so so, so uh, we just we understand this only already. Getting and managing deployment images. 
okay we already know this also okay now I'll switch to managing and monitoring and maintaining virtual machines so if, I, if, I, if we're talking about the managing and monitoring monitoring and managing okay so what we need to understand what we need to read in this we need to read three to four things three to four sub sub topics are there okay number one topic is we need to understand uh, WDS in this WSUS sorry WSUS I'll let you know what is that 465 yes the number one topic we need to understand is now right now we, uh, we, we did everything in the virtualization okay so we can go for WS US Windows Software Update Services Windows Software Update Services yeah Windows Windows Software update services. Okay. Now, what does this mean? The, uh, the the question is that if you're talking about this WWSUS, so like imagine right now we have four machines in my network. Right? Imagine imagine in in future I have forty machines in my network. Okay. Now, what I need to do? Uh, I want to update them. I want to I want to update their softwares. I want to update uh, my OS. Okay, I want to update some applications. So what do you need to do? I need to go uh, uh, every machine one by one. Yeah. Right. I need to update it, and then again go for uh, click, click on automatic updates, and then they automatically go for internet and then update it. I will think. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now what I want to do? I don't want to do this. I want that. I need one dedicated server. I need one centralized server. All the machines uh, submit the request to my Server and this server goes to uh, my uh, means internet with Microsoft and take all the updates and keep it with them. Okay. okay, all the all the machines are able to access with the server, download their updates, and then they're going to install it. Okay, I don't want to them to go directly on the internet. Understood. So for that we use WSUS. WS US is what it's a it's a simple a server it's it's a it's a kind of server role through which they allows you to update the uh, you can see that they uh, they update they allows you to update OS they allows you to update applications all other things okay so what do you write for this you write it is a number one point it is a server role in the Windows Server 2016. Okay, that allows you to download and distribute distribute updates to Windows clients. Windows clients and servers. Understood? You will understand what I write over there. So, if there's someone asking what is w uh, WSUS, so it is a server role in Windows Server 2016 or any uh, servers, you can do that, right? 2012, 16, 19, 8, anything that allows you to download first, download and distribute updates. Now, with the help of this, we can decide what updates I want to allow. Uh, I want allow client to install we can restrict the uh, 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 client also but you don't want to allow do you want to, you don't want to update this you want you don't want to go for this you take only this you take only this understood fine so it is a server role in the windows Server 2016 that allows you to download and distribute updates to windows clients as and servers understood now after that we have uh, some things are there now, uh, if if you want to deploy WS US server deployments, deployments. Now, how many servers you want? Now, how many WS US servers you want? Okay, WS US servers deployment uh, deployment options. You can say that. The topic is deployment options. How many servers you want? 
okay sometimes we can go for only single server only sometimes we have a single ws us server okay or sometimes we have a multiple ws us servers also now how now in, in what cases we have a we have a single server single server like we have only one uh, one location my company works in only delhi imagine okay i have only one location so i just put one server ws us server and all the client or uh, all the delhi delhi computers are updated with this ws us server now imagine we have multiple locations like i one uh, i have i have three locations delhi hyderabad chennai okay in every location i have uh, you can select you can i have 1000 1000 clients in delhi we have 2000 uh, 2000 systems uh, uh, my uh, in hyderabad we have 5000 systems in chennai we have 10000 systems so with the help of one server i am not able to update all the all the systems so what i do i can put one one server on each location to manage all the client systems or to, or to update all the client systems Understood. So we can deploy two ways. Either we can go for single at WS US server, or we can go for multiple WS US servers. Where we can use W uh, multiple WS US server where we have a multiple physical locations. So each location has has, a, has its own WS US server. Understood. Fine. <coughs> Now, after this, we have. Uh, WS US server hierarchy hierarchies okay means hierarchy means the way it works okay so take another bit. now what type of hierarchy we are following to uh, to implement this ws us servers okay i tell you we have two types of hierarchies number one is we have uh, uh, you can see that downstream server number one is downstream okay downstream servers okay number second we have upstream servers Stream, st r e a m stream servers downstream and upstream servers okay so uh, if you're talking about the downstream servers so what is the downstream servers downstream server receives update from the ws us upstream servers downstream server receives update from ws us upstream servers and that's it yeah like what i what i tell you Uh, these servers are receive are receive updates from upstream servers. Okay. Understood. Can I have upstream servers? So the upstream servers <laughs> are directly connected with the internet. Okay. They they get update and they give to the downstream servers and then downstream servers give to them to the clients okay. like this. Okay. So upstream servers which are directly connected with the with the clients. These servers are I'm sorry are directly directly connected with the with the uh, microsoft okay for updates to client through uh, sorry through uh, internet it are o u g h through and understood fine so this is the hierarchy we have ws servers 
because if you have multiple servers so one server is only go connect with the with the microsoft and other servers are connect with their upstream servers so this is a upstream server over there we have downstream servers and then they have a client client and that's it fine so uh, like this like this this we have okay now <clears throat> another thing we have ws us database okay so ws us uh, 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 database contains all the updates okay it contains contains all the updates we updates also we have variety of updates like security updates normal updates okay these are the updates okay so it contains all the uh, uh, updates updates not only updates it contains all the updates or uh, you can say that computer groups computer gro groups okay and approvals approval information approval approvals in a in a database well, imagine I have 100 updates out of 100 I tell client one that you are able to install only 10 updates okay, okay so I get approval only 10 updates rest 90 updates they are not able to install okay so approvals so we can define the approvals also okay so now we have two types of uh, database in WS US number one we can so we can call internal updates windows internal uh, database internal database where we where it uses the C drive or you can say that we have a separate drive okay where we can install uh, update uh, database in the in the windows okay where we can install a database in the windows another one or either we can use SQL I told you SQL it's a SQL server a separate server okay SQL either you can use SQL server so this is a separate server yeah I am installing SQL I, I just first I take I take my uh, upgrade a server I am installed 2012 or 16 servers mm -hmm. and then we can install SQL okay mm -hmm. so I can connect these SQL server with the WSUS server database mm -hmm. and all the WSUS server database are successfully maintained by SQL server okay we have one uh, very good uh, comp very good feature known as uh, it's not a feature it's a it's a component known as SSCM SCCM system center configuration manager okay this is the this is the one of the one of the tool for microsoft okay so if you so if you do anything if you want to manage virtualization virtual machines if you want to uh, go for updates you can you, if you want to deploy something so with the help of with the help of ssm we can do everything okay right now it's very very uh, very very good tool or very very late, uh, famous tool working by working uh, uh, means uh, working with your microsoft running in microsoft servers okay so this is also uh, this is not a, this is not a uh, pre-installed tool in your servers we need to again download it SSCM SCCM okay system center configuration manager you have to download it and then you can install it on the servers and then you can go for it it's, it's like a SSCM server you can see that okay so in that cases they use WS US so they use SQL server database for that okay so we have two types of uh, databases. Number one is Windows internal database, where we can install the WSUS database in the Windows, okay, in the operating system by itself. Or we have a separate server, SQL server, where we can install the database of WSUS. Understood? Okay. Now, uh, the last thing you need to understand in this is we have in the SQL anything. As you know, it's a database. No, I'm not a separate part of uh, like like your uh, CCNA, CCNP, CCI routing of using a separate part and security is a separate part. Like same uh, in database or infra, a separate separate part. Infra we have so many things: automation, database. Okay, so right right now we are we are we are learning core infra. If you want to learn database, you have so many databases are there. Okay, like Oracle. DBA the database Microsoft SQL Oracle DBA okay so you learn databases also if you yeah, interested in core and... yeah right now we are in core okay so we are we are only making infra we are only working in on infra only we are not working on database right now okay so 
So this is what we have. Okay. The last thing you need to understand is WSUX uh, management process. How WSUX works. Okay. It's an easy four way. Number one is access. Access means access means what? Access means the goal or the uh, you need to plan something first. Okay. Access means planning. 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 Okay. So you can say that it's a plan. The short form is plan. You can say that. You need to first plan it. But what software you need to install? Like imagine once you have a 10 to 15 years of experience in your job profile, you have a, 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 a role called uh, infra consultant. Okay, server infra consultant. Consultant. It's a job. It's a job role. Okay, where you can plan once. Like imagine uh, someone gives you a company. Like this is the this is a whole company. You need to configure all the infra. Okay, you need to configure server part as well. You need to configure network part as well. So network you already know. You can go configure network part. Now when you're going to configure server part, you need to first plan how many servers we need, how many clients we need. After that, how much softwares we need, how many softwares we need what roles we need okay so that is known as planning okay number second number second uh, we are going to use identity identity so identity means what identity is is the uh, is the updates available for you what updates you want to available for for clients okay First you plan, okay, I need these, these updates. Now second, out of this, how many updates you want to enable for clients, okay? Number third, uh, we have evaluate, evaluate and plan again. Evaluate and plan. Evaluate means, evaluate, what is the meaning of evaluate over there? Evaluate means test updates. Whatever dates you have, it's working properly or not. Evaluate them, test them. If it's all working fine, fine, then you need to go to deploy. Last one is deploy. Everything is fine, then you can deploy the plan. Understood? So these are the process management of the WS tools. We need to follow these things. Okay? So, um, I am mentioning over there, identity means where we allows update for clients okay and evaluate means where we test the updates okay mm -hmm. and last one where we Deploy updates on clients. This is the process you can say that. Okay, so uh, over there we just first plan what updates we allow or what updates we deny. Understood? Clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, this is the process plan we have. WSUS management process plans. It's, it's the WSUS works like this. Okay, so now if I if I uh, if, if I showing you how we can uh, simple go for uh, WSUS, so it's look like this. Like if I go to my uh, server 2, I have a server 2 right now. Okay. I was going to uh, shut down the Windows uh, Windows 7 right now because I don't want don't need right now don't want client right now. Okay, now this is my server two. The same thing you need to understand. The requirement is the same thing. We need uh, a simple separate one drive for. WSUS server database. Okay. Yeah, I have I have another 
the separate tree for WS US database. Like same, we uh, created W uh, DS database. So I just add 20 GB space more for WS US database. Okay, so I just add the hard disk again. Add one space. Uh, I go for again 20 GB. Recommended is 40 GB always. Okay, but 20 GB is minimum because I don't have that much updates. Okay, so simply click on next now. So you can see 20 GB is there. Click on OK. Now need to open disk management once. I close this WDS. Wizard. <coughs> open disk management. Able to understand? Mm -hmm. Now you can see that on the down. We have 20 GB disk 4. Okay, if so I just online it, initialize it, MBR, okay. And now I'm going to create a <coughs> volume. This is for WSUS. Okay, next and finish. This is the F drive I have. Okay. Let's close it. Now open this manager. Okay. Now go to add rules. I'm going to install WSUS tools. Okay, this is also a role. Lunch break. It's 12 now. 12 5. You want? Try it now? Okay. So, uh, I just showing you. I um, mean, first, I just let, let them install. Okay. Meanwhile, we can go for lunch. Okay. Then we can W Windows Server Update Services. So, it's not a software, it's a server. So, Windows Server Update Services. Okay. Just check this option. Okay. Simple click on add. We just see they want these. 4.6 features they want dotnet asp.net 4.6 also okay to install they want is also to install it okay so just click on add features these are the prerequisites you can see that okay dotnet framework 4.6 asp.net 4.6 and is services okay now simple click on next click on next next see we have the option Windows uh, uh, WDS connectivity or WDS services or SQL server connectivity. So what do you want to do? If you if you want w, uh, SQL server, if you have a SQL server, that time you can check this option. Okay. Right now we don't have a, uh, a SQL server, so we can go for Windows internal database. Okay. Now just click, click on next now. Now they're asking you where you update, uh, save your path. So I have my F drive, right? So I have F colon slash F drive. And I am making one folder name is updates. This is the location where all updates download from the internet. This is making this is my one of my upstream server you can see. So I'm click on next now. Okay. See they will give you at least six GB for free space. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the drive should be formatted with NTFS. Okay. So I'm click on next now. IIS installed. Okay. They automatically taking all the main components they want, default components. 
and then simple restart if required click on yes and click on install this is the process to install wh now after lunch we can configure this okay meanwhile i just pause the video okay once it is installed i'll come back with this okay so what we did before lunch we just installed wh subs okay windows server updates okay now uh, we can go for launch post installation task after that okay so what we uh, write previously it's a software update services but the full form is server update services okay mm this one this one this one is okay so this is over there is a server remember this windows server update services okay now uh, what i need to do i just click on uh, uh, launch post installation task okay please wait while your server is configured now for configuring we just click on those that option okay or what do you do what do you do you just close this one you have the option go to tools over there we have the option on the last windows server update services let's open it over there also you can open it now you just minimize this one and the down i think so this is just service it's running okay so uh, what they <coughs> asking you store up updates locally so in f drive they going to update up, uh, locally yes. update the a simple click on run yeah simple click on run so the post installation task is processed this might take a few minutes please do not close this window okay And then after you'll pop in the client to see. No, first we need to configure everything now. I'm showing you uh, the the wizard right now. I don't have an internet connection in my VMs, so they are not able to go for internet connection and go for that. Okay, but I'm showing you that how uh, it's look like. What's the page you can receive? You received the console. once go to start okay now it's already open now you can see that it's look like the page over uh, this is the page we have okay just right click on that click on connect to server okay and you need to connect your server name my server name is what see the port number of this is 8530 8530 is a port number of wsu us okay so my server name is server2 502 dot said dot local right okay now i'll click on connect over there to oh, side now i don't want to use it i just want to connect we try okay Thank you. 
Okay, it goes to internet, I think so. <coughs> you don't have internet, that's why they're not checking it to connect. So it's not Yeah, we must have internet. Connection. For this key and Okay, fine. So you need internet connection, so that's why we go for that. Okay, so um, this is what WS US. I'll, I'll showing you all the like if 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 you have that uh, proper internet connection, mm -hmm. so they gives you over there all options, upstream, live stream servers, and all the things. Yeah. Okay. Just go for the more rules once again. Mm-hmm. 
I'm just removing the rule, huh? Now we go, now we start uh, uh, performance. Okay, uh, monitoring. So how we can go for this? First, I need to power off this power machine. Two, I don't want to use server to now. I'm all. I'm now. I need only server one. So I'm doing monitoring in my DC. Okay. So uh, if you're talking about the monitoring, monitoring on server. Sorry. I want out. Uh, and and uh, we do monitoring of server 2016. Okay, tools. Okay. So, uh, so fixing we have some monitoring tools also. So it starts with monitoring tools. We have tools like number one, we have a task manager. Okay. Number two, we have performance monitor. Okay. Number three, we have resource monitor. And last one we have log uh, event viewer okay the other four tools we are using in uh for monitoring basis monitoring means everything whatever you can uh, whatever you want uh, you want to monitor whatever like application data hardware software anything okay we just start with the task manager so if i if i this is my server one dc if i right click and we can go for task manager okay we have the option all these options you have okay like this is the options. Just click on more details. You have the options over there on the top. Okay, like uh, processes, performance, user details, services. Processes means whatever application you are running or whatever program you are running, it shows you over there. Okay. So with the help of you can just if you want to if you want to uh, uh, means um, stop any application or program, just click on that. You have the option end task on the background. You just end task on this. Okay, we can go for performance. In performance, they they showing you all the things. Like CPU, how much our CPU speed is there? Okay, how much it taking? Okay, processes, how many processes are working on CPU right now? Okay, memory out of 2 GB, I'm um, right now 1.3 is used, 7.27 MB is free. Total memory over there is uh, 2 GB only. Yeah, uh, out of 2 GB, 1.3 is already used. Okay, fine. This thing now, after that, in performance, uh, you have an Ethernet connection also. Ethernet means. Uh, uh, speed, speed of, of your Ethernet. When I when when I am receiving or sending anything, so how much speed is there? Okay. Then after that we have a users option. Users option means which user is logged in right now. I am logging with the administrator. I am administrator using 13 services. When I am using with the administrator, these 13 services are running in the background. Okay. Fine. Last we have a details. In details, this gives you all the name of services which is running right now. Which sub these all are services. These all are um, uh, operating system services. You can say that DNS services is running. Okay, uh, your Active Directory services is running. You can see that. See, Active Directory running. Active Directory PID means process ID. Okay, status means running, stop, stop, suspended, anything. Okay, username. Which username is running right now? So if we're talking about the Explorer.exe, administrator is running. Explorer means the 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 file explorer. Okay, and after that we have a CPU. How much CPU usage over there? How much memory usage is there? A description over there. The server's description you can say that. Okay. Now last we have these are these all our services we are running in the server. These all our services. Approximately, if you calculate 58 or something services we have we have in our Microsoft tools. So these all are services which we are running by default. Some are running, some are stopped, some are suspended. All these options are are there. Okay, now this is the one tool through which we can we can we can configure everything. Okay, with the help of this is the these are the five major uh, major tabs we have to manage the servers to manage the monitoring of the servers. Okay, this is the one tool. If we're talking about the second tool, it's for. Understood this tool? Yeah. Easy. Now after that we have a, a performance monitor. So if you if you go for just close all the windows. Go to start, okay. On start, you have 
admin tools on the down admin tools okay admin straight tools over there we have the option um, performance monitor you can see that performance monitor so just click on that performance monitor okay performance monitor you can see that we have uh, we have we have some monitoring services in that like uh, like if, if you go to uh, performance monitor it's monitoring by default what is what is it is going to monitor it's going to monitor process, your processor right now processor time how much speed it has so okay, you can see the red bar over there so on this time it's working like this is working these are the percentage of the time percentage of the, of the cpu how much percentage is utilized or you are you busy no, right now right now it's very very low because there is no nothing running on that okay now we have the option of reports also okay we can maintain the reports also how i showing you like first you expand this one okay you can go for see you have two types of uh, data collector data collector means which you want to uh, uh, means what component or what services you want to monitor okay you can define in the data collector okay so if you go if you go for user defined you can define manually which services you want to okay like in in this user defined you have the option server manager performance monitor like i want to uh, i want to monitor my server server manager tool if i click on that we have the options over there okay you just right click on that and you click on start simple so it's going to start your monitoring when attempting to start the data collector set from the following error occupied okay 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 first you need to uh, Okay, you need to add something or, or to do one thing also. Like I'm showing you, like if you go for system, we have the option Active Directory Diagnostics. If I want to start my, uh, my I want that, okay, I have Active Directory services. I want to monitor my AD services. So right click on that, click on start. Okay, now it's going to start. You can see that. See, the green arrow is there. It means it started. Okay, now I'm going to reports over there, system defined, system, and then we have the Active Directory Diagnostics. Let's expand this. We have a report, so it's collecting now. It's going to collect the report. It takes 300 seconds, means approximately uh, five minutes. Five minutes to uh, to collect all the reports about Active Directory diagnostics. Means it it uh, um, it checks everything. Okay, how much processor Active Active Directory services takes? Okay, how much RAM it takes? Okay, what are the services we are running in Active Directory services? What are the sub services that we are running? Okay, this gives you all brief introduction, brief information about uh, Active Directory Diagnostics. Okay, okay. let's waste them. Let's wait one once it's completed. Okay, it's going to be. You will understand these monitoring tools. Okay. So we have four types of monitoring tools. We are using second type. Okay. Right now it's creating the report, generating or collecting information and then creating the reports.
Okay, behind AD, uh, one uh, protocol is used, LDAP, LDAP. LD. LDAP. Behind AD, active Behind active DAP. Okay, so this is the protocol name. Is. This is the protocol name. LDAP. 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 Okay, the full form is LIGHT light. Lightweight directory access protocol. Okay, the uh, port number of this protocol is 389. So what do you use of this? This is the use of uh, when you when you install AD or when you work on AD. On the on the back of AD, this protocol is working. If this protocol is not working, my AD is not able to work. Okay, so this is the protocol. Okay, fine. So once you when you do anything in your AD, okay, this protocol is working. Okay, this is the protocol. Lightweight directory access protocol. Port number of this protocol is 389. Okay, so uh, right now this protocol is working in the back of this. All the stuff. What we can, what we, what we need, what we are doing. We are getting install. We are installing domain controllers. We are creating a user accounts. Anything, anything. What we create. Okay. In the back of this, LDAP is running. Okay. Nine minutes. Okay, meanwhile we can see this this is also we have a we have a system diagnosis also in the system diagnostics what what they showing you they showing you everything about system like i'm showing you see these are system diagnostics option it means uh, what they diagnose in the system they all all these things OS operating system processor system services okay your disk antivirus your bios network motherboard everything every hardware software things Okay, in system diagnostics. Okay, so uh, this is what is and, and the system and system performance is that in system of performance they they have performed only two things: anti kernel or performance monitor. What is the meaning of anti kernel? Anti kernel is operating system file. Yeah, uh, whatever you can do in operating system background, this file is working. Anti kernel. If this file is not running, your operating system is not running. Okay, fine. So you can see that the report. See the report is created. Now you can see that the CPU is five percent idle, network is zero percent, disk is four four uh, percent per page. Now memory is sixty seven percent is utilizing. Four four per page. Four per page means uh, uh for the speed of this memory. This is the speed of the memory. Okay. Right. Now four, four blocks. Yeah, four second. You can see that. Yeah. Okay, so it is after that we have an active directory. You can expand this. We have the options over there. You can see the LDAP protocol is there. Expand it. Okay, they're showing you these all our services are running on the LDAP protocol. So if you expand uh, these things, it gives you everything CPU, what CPU services are there. See, you can see a processors. Processes, how many processes are working right now in the CPU? Okay, these all our processes are working on the CPU. Okay, so if you feel any load, anything, okay, they, they're showing you over there. Right now it's idle, so it's okay. You know what this is a perfect report right now. There are issues for that. Okay, understood. Yeah. Fine, like this. Okay, yeah. if you want to add manually something, like I want to, okay, I want to, uh, I want to monitor my hard disk. Okay, so how I go for that? I just click on user defined over there. I need to add something data collector. Okay, now this is you can say that, okay, it's a new data collector set. Okay, give any name. Simply click on next over there. Whatever, what you want to uh, use. Okay, the WDAC diagnostics. Okay, our system, system basic or something. If you want to, I want to. Okay, I want to. I want to uh, monitor everything. The basic one. Okay, you can go for that. Or you have to go to browse. Okay, or you, if you have to save any virtual hard disk, you can. You can go for virtual hard disk also. 
okay fine so if i go for basic one simple click on simple click on simple next this is the path where it saves all the things so the system root drive means c drive in c drive pop logs over there this collector set is the save information okay and then simply click on finish you can see that we have a data new set set collector over there so in this we have these three things to monitor so we can create a uh, our cells also okay we can create our new data collector also okay using the by default one understood fine so this is what we have in uh, this like like same we can go for system diagnostics also right click simple start and then it's making the report in the under the system diagnostics the same thing it goes to there it takes 60 seconds to diagnose <clears throat> only one minute okay like this see this is the report we have okay so if you have anything any information they gives you over there right now everything is okay some checks are fail because they have they don't have uh, information about it some hardware is passed some hardware is fail so the, the, those are fail they don't have any information about it okay so that's why they fail because i am not installing anything in that okay so that's what we have the last tool we have is <coughs> resource monitor you can see that This is the performance monitor. Over there we have resource monitor also. See resource monitor. Okay. In Windows. Yeah. This is the this is the same which we which we it's showing like sorry task manager it shows like task manager same. But it's very depth tool and as compared to task manager resource. Yeah, resource monitor. See this is the resource monitor we have. So it go for overview of CPU, disk, network, and memory. Okay, what CPU is utilizing over there? If you click, they're showing you all the CPU, which services are running, which services are suspended. In memory, they're showing you <coughs> how much physical memory we are using right now. <coughs> okay, disk, <coughs> how much disks we are using right now? Okay, disk is running in 100 KB KB per second, kilobyte per second. Okay, a network, there is a network running right now. Which activity is running in the network, and what is the utilization? Where the utilization of network is? They're showing you everything in that. Understood. Okay, last one we have the event viewer. Event viewer is for uh, checking the logs, log files and all. Like you, if you can find uh, find any error, any information, okay, any warning. So all the things are saved in event viewer. Here is event viewer. <coughs> event viewer. Okay. <coughs> so this is the event viewer we have. Okay, so if you go for Windows logs in application, you can find find everything over there related to application. Any error, any warning, anything you can find, you can just check the event. What is the problem? Okay, that gives you error. This is the error when it comes. Okay, what time it comes? Everything is there. Okay. I can see that. Right now we don't have any errors. Right now, all our informations. Okay. Now if you, if you click on a uh, uh, system, so they give you system information. System C. If you if you find any error, anything. Okay. So when it comes, what is the error? They showing you everything on the the down. Okay. Fine. Now if you, if you go for if you want to search if you want to check Active Directory errors, then click on Active Directory. They gives you all the information about Active Directory. Okay. Directory services. So this is the directory services we have. Any warning? See if you have any warning. Just click on that. We have the options. 
we have DOM there. LDAP interface, something, something warning is there. Okay, now uh, if you go for DNS, DNS, sub, uh, DNS errors and warnings are showing you everything. Okay, it, it maintains all the log files. Okay, so if you want to troubleshoot anything, you can troubleshoot with this help of task event viewer. You want to check any error, any warning, and all those things. And that's it. Okay, so these are the things you have. So that's it for monitoring and all. So total we have four types of monitoring softwares. Okay. This is the four monitoring softwares we have. Task manager, performance monitor, source monitor, web viewer. Okay, these are the by default softwares. If you want to go for uh, uh, third party, then you can download it and you can go for that. Understood. Okay, then. So that's it for today. Okay, let's stop this video now.